All right, well, welcome back to uh, Exhaust Sports Auto. My name is Kevin, and you are here to witness the 2020 Toyota Corolla sedan. So let's just take this bad boy out, and uh, let's see what's what here. So if you haven't already, I've already reviewed the uh, the hatchback, the uh, 2019 hatchback with the manual transmission. However, this is the sedan, obviously, with the CVT transmission. I've been very curious about the CVT, so I'm very happy to have that here today. I've been driving this car around for a couple of days now, and uh, long story short, if you just want the quick summary, I'm really impressed with this thing. Everybody's impressed with everything. You get into the Mazda, you get into the uh, uh, the Korean cars, the Hondas. I mean, you're, you're impressed with everything. That's true. However, every car manufacturer has something that they focus on or they try to offer that's different from the other manufacturers, right? So we're gonna see what Toyota has to offer with this particular vehicle. Now, I guess, first of all, let's uh, talk about the looks briefly. I really like how aggressive the new Corollas look. They look, uh, <laughs> they definitely look Japanese, that's for sure. They look like a little Japanese Hot Wheels now. This uh, sedan, however, uh, a little bit more conservative in the uh, the rear end. It kind of has like this uh, old school look in the rear, like with those little taillights. It looks uh, like an older vehicle, but um, as a whole, though, I really like the way it looks. And uh, don't mind the other uh, curb rashing. Uh, <laughs> the previous journalist, I guess, had didn't really know how to uh, park a vehicle, so there's that. Those wheels do look fantastic. They are 18-inch wheels wrapped in 225 wide tires uh, in all four corners. And they are actually these Yokohama tires. Usually, I roast Yokohama tires. However, in this case, and I don't mean roast like uh, roast of tires. I mean uh, mock or uh, make fun of. Like you just saw there, I just peeled out of that corner and... Uh, literally like no real tire squeal to report these things grip extremely well if these are the oem tires like these avid gts i believe they're called i believe that's a model if that's the oem tire i'm very impressed because it gives you a lot of confidence in piloting this car now some uh, specs for you this vehicle is actually fitted with a two liter four cylinder because it's the xse model and this motor produces about 169 horsepower and 151 pounds-feet of torque. This is branded as the dynamic force four-cylinder or something like that. That's kind of like what they call this engine because there's another engine option as well, which is a 1.8 liter four-cylinder. Check out some of this handling here again. Just grips really well, but this four cylinder, this dynamic force, it pulls extremely well for what this is. This thing weighs about 3,150 pounds, so pretty light for what it is. But I haven't tried out the, uh, the regular 1.8 liter. That's kind of the motor you get with the base model, the, the LE and things of that nature. Uh, if you want this two liter, you can actually, there's two trims that you can get this in. It's the SC and this XSC that we're in right now. And I'll talk more about the trims in a bit, but um, yeah, this this is the engine I definitely want. This is such a fun engine to ring out. It's a lot of fun, honestly. And you'd be surprised, it is actually really quick too. When you get on it, like it builds up the power extremely well. And I have to mention the CVT because I've been very curious about it and it is definitely living up to expectations. It's a very special CVT. It actually has a physical first gear to give you a smoother kind of launch, if you will. And then the CVT kind of takes over. But yeah, this CVT performs extremely well. I said the same thing about the, um, what do you call it? The Korean cars, the Kia Hyundai CVTs, or they brand it as the IVT, right? Some of these CVT, IVTs, whatever you want to call it, they actually perform better than some actual automatic transmission. So this is definitely a welcome change. Even in the uh, sport mode, which I did try briefly, it react. it's very eager to react. I think nobody's going to have an issue with the way that this transmission performs. It's really stupendous. So it's got effortless power, and I had it on the highway, and this is where... I'm going to kind of compare back to the 2019 hatchback because I don't know what it was, but when I had the 2019 Corolla hatchback, I noticed this instability out on the highway. Like there was just, it felt like it was hopping around a little bit more and it was just, it really deterred from the confidence I had piloting that car. Whereas this, I had this thing out on the highway and not only did I drive it at some legitimate speed, but it was a 
very windy day and this thing was extremely solid out on the highways dude it remained planted it still had the same level of confidence i had out on these regular roads i was just really impressed with i was so happy that toyota fixed that because that was literally the only real issue i had with the um 2019 Corolla hatchback I had. Otherwise, I loved it. I loved driving it out in the city speeds. So I'm very happy to report that this 2020 sedan is extremely stable out in the highway speeds. And I had it at some, uh, you know, pretty potent speeds as well. I don't know what they changed, but whatever, or if they even changed anything at all, or maybe there's just a defect with the, uh, the test car that I had as a hatchback. But uh, I'm just very happy to report that the highway speeds are excellent just see some of that turn in right here never peels out on me it's it remains neutral you know what i'm saying yeah that was some very strong acceleration right there very impressed and the braking performance is also very excellent great pedal feel you know what i'm saying and they do genuinely stop the car extremely well so i definitely appreciate that as well all the driving characteristics of this car is excellent and another thing that really sets toyota apart is just the ride quality now the xse and the se trim models they get the uh sport tuned suspension <laughs> you know what i'm saying but the corolla still remains one of the best riding compact cars and i really love that it just soaks up all the bumps. I mean, it's never a fatiguing experience in this car. You can literally rack up some miles in this thing. And that's the primary highlight for me with Toyota vehicles. They're just so comfortable. That's what they mainly focus on. And the other thing is, God, Lee, man, these cyclists are really breaking my balls here with these reviews. And that's the other thing, you know, Toyotas have their own unique feel. And I almost say this in every new Toyota vehicle that I review, but driving wise, they have their own secure, unique feel that, you know, you feel at peace when driving a Toyota Pro. I don't know what it is, especially if you grew up with Toyotas and you've been driving a lot of these models, you'll kind of know what I'm referring to, but they just have this comfortable, natural feel, you know, with the ride quality, with the steering feel. It's so easy to drive, and they really nailed the um, the seating position with these cars as well. Great visibility in pretty much everywhere. The the side mirrors do a great job, but you know, being a all the compact cars are so small that they're very easy to place on the road, very easy to drive in general. But a lot of what I liked about the 2019 hatchback really does continue here. You know, in city street driving, I mean, the handling is superb. You saw me like, you know, cock the wheel, you know, make those sharp turns and, you know, accelerate out of them. It never peels out on me. A lot of confidence. The only real complaint that I have driving wise with the Corolla is actually just the refinement, like the, uh, the road noise, the tire noise, the wind noise, stuff like that. It's rather high in this vehicle. It's not ridiculous, but it's definitely noticeable. There, you can tell that it's not a very insulated cabin space, essentially, you know? Uh, there's obviously no double pane glass or anything like that. The road noise, the wind noise, that, that only gets amplified when, even more when you're out of the highway speed. So something to note, um, I feel like there are some more quieter options out there, but again, this isn't ridiculous. I've noticed more noisiness with more of these uh, Toyota Lexus products, especially of new. I don't know what's up with that, but that's kind of really the only thing they can really improve upon because otherwise the main complaint I had with the hatchback has been resolved with this sedan. No idea what they changed, but this feels far more stable at speeds. It's been very pleasurable piloting this car around. And again, like I mentioned, you know, there's good and bad about all of these models, but you can pretty much get into any compact and appreciate it. But the thing about Toyota is just the comfort, the familiarity, especially if you've been driving Toyotas all this time, there's just something easy and at home about these Toyota products. It's very difficult for me to explain, but I know ride quality is definitely one of their main uh, things that they like to focus on. They nailed it here. And it's just great to know that you can get even more comfortable versions of this car if you step to the, uh, the lower trims and get like the 16 inch wheel options and even a 15 inch wheel option. This thing will ride like it's on a cloud, I bet. So let me just briefly talk about the trims here before I get into the interior segment. I really like this motor, but you can get this in the SE trim as well. And the SE trim is probably the Corolla that I would personally choose because it's about three to four grand less than this XSE trim model. And you still get a lot for your money there. You obviously get the motor and yes, you have the SE is where you have the option of getting a manual transmission. 
I don't know if I would even stem for the manual uh, because you'd be surprised. The manual actually kind of takes away from the sportiness or the eagerness of the Corolla, which is ridiculous to say, but uh, hear me out. But yeah, one of the things I noticed driving around in the manual is that it had really long throws and a really long clutch. So uh, it was more so of a casual manual driving experience. It's like it just gave you the option of just going through your own gears, but it was never really a sporty manual transmission. It wasn't like this you know, tight thing. Uh, whereas the CVT thing, uh, it really does perform very well. It really does react when you stomp on the gas. Like if you're a foot to the floor type person like me, this is actually a very fun and pleasurable experience. So I don't know, just something you want, might wanna try out. So you get that option with the SE and you don't really lose out on much. Really the only things that the XSE comes with, more so as standard, is the, the sunroof. You get, there's an optional blind spot monitoring, which this vehicle has, but you do in general get all the uh, Toyota Safety Sense 2.0 tech and pretty much all the trim models. So you still get a lot of the safety options with the SE trim as well. There's a couple of small other little things, but for the most part, the SE isn't really missing out on much and you're saving so much more money and you still get the same motor. So that's really the one I would get. The, uh, the 1.8 liter, I think it makes like 139 horsepower and like 120 something pounds feet of torque. I haven't driven it, but in a vehicle that only weighs like 3,000 pounds, every little bit of extra horsepower you can get does make a difference. So I like this motor. It feels relatively effortless actually, and it's just the more enjoyable motor to ring out. So. That's kind of my recommendation there. And it gets tremendous gas mileage as well, like 30 in the city and like 40 on the highway. And they're not joking about that. I'm literally averaging like foot to the floor. I'm getting like 30 MPG in the city for sure. So it kind of makes like the hybrid option irrelevant because you're already getting like damn near hybrid levels of fuel economy already. So there's just no real reason to go for that. But now that we're at a uh, stop here, let's just kind of talk about this interior segment real quick. These seats, they're not the best seats in the world, but they're pretty good. They're, they're you know, they're, they're all right seats. They're still relatively comfortable. I like the look of them. You know, they kind of have like that F Sport look to the uh, to the seats. Very interesting. I don't know what it's, I mean, it's kind of like this leather pleather thing with the little cloth vinyl insert. Don't know what's up with that, but whatever. Just due to the general comfort of the vehicle itself, this is a very non fatiguing experience. So uh, I think most people should not have an issue with this thing. Surprisingly easy to get in and out of, uh, despite it being such a, a, a lower vehicle. So there is that. This steering wheel, I love the size of this thing. Uh, it's literally perfect for this car. And because it's like uh, one of the higher trim models, you do get this more leather wrapped uh, steering wheel feel. So I do like that as well. You do get the paddles. And like I mentioned, they do react pretty well if you put it in the sport mode. I will, however, say though, uh, it does auto upshift for you and it does, it will eventually kick you out of the uh, the manual uh, mode if you're not active in it. So there is that. Because it's the fully loaded trim, you do have the uh, automatic headlights, uh, automatic uh, high beams, uh, regular wiper stock, however, and you do have have some controls on the steering wheel here which i'll get to in a bit a little door handle thing here very uh, bmw inspired uh, this little door handle so that's kind of interesting a lot more uh, hard touch plastics in here i will admit to that even though it's one of the higher trim models it is a compact car so i don't really care but i'm just saying uh definitely a few rattles i've noticed particularly from the passenger side door you know this vehicle has about what eight thousand miles on it so that's something i know is there but not really the end of the world. That's about the only thing I noticed regarding that. You have one touch up and down for the driver's side window only. No memory seats or anything like that, but you do have electric seats for the driver's side, manual seats for the passenger side. Pretty normal stuff there. This particular one is fitted with the nine speaker JBL audio system, which is actually pretty legit. So I will admit to that. As far as like the type of music that I listen to anyway, I listen to all kinds of ratchet, you know, like key glocks and young Dolphs and all that. So uh, I guess maybe I'm not the best person to judge an audio system, but uh, for millennials like myself, I, I guess it's pretty good. It's very bass heavy though. This is JBL. So one thing to note, I actually had to turn down the bass uh, from, you know, everything was in the middle section, right? The treble, the mid, the bass. I actually had to lower the bass. That's how loud the bass was in this thing. And that is an optional extra, even if you get the XSC. So, whether you get the SE or the XSE, you still need to option the JBL if you want that. It does sound pretty good, so I would go for it, I guess. You got plenty of space in the door pockets here, which I really appreciate. You can definitely fit water bottles in there. Uh, again, hard touch plastic. This 
overall the doors feel very kind of light and more so on the cheaper side so you know could use a little bit more heft to the vehicle one funny thing is i reviewed the uh, the 2020 yaris which is technically a mazda 2 and that felt a lot more solid like a typical mazda would i don't know what it is something about the way they make their cars there's a lot more heft to it where whereas this toyota corolla doesn't quite have that so that's something I, uh, interesting that i noticed there but again there's still that certain level of toyota quality and familiarity that i still don't mind it it's just something i noticed you have your uh, traditional gear selector so i do appreciate that you have a little manual mode down there uh, you got your little sport mode trash control off mode the uh, electric parking brake you do have a wireless charger in this model it doesn't it's very slow so uh there is that but it is a place to put your phone i have a note 10 plus and it holds my phone perfectly and there's still room to put an even larger phone in there so that's uh interesting you can pretty much put like a tablet in there so that's good uh, you do have heated seats for the front two seats here in this xse model climate control totally separate from the screen it is so easy to use you have your own dedicated fan control switch and the um you know cooling heated uh knob here as well feels great looks great easy to use nice little display love it very annoying amounts of a uh, piano gloss plastic being used all throughout it's already scratched up lots of a uh, debris and dust and everything like that particles showing up here so that gets dirty disgusting very quick and it's just all over like the infotainment screen as well so that's kind of annoying now speaking of infotainment um honestly a lot of people kind of typically complain about this screen honestly i got used to it it's actually not too too bad i don't mind using it now it's not the best i do think hyundai kia does the infotainment stuff the best but uh this is okay i got used to it so it's not too bad uh, i did notice a a little bit of lag when I press some of these buttons. You do have dedicated buttons on the side here, which kind of makes access easier. Again, if you bought this car, you can get used to it pretty quickly, not too bad. Now the gauge cluster is kind of interesting. So you have an option of getting like a four inch or a seven inch display for the speedometer, which, um, okay, not really necessary. I wish it just kind of did like a physical gauge cluster here, but I guess you're trying to be uh, advanced and bougie now, right? So. Uh, it, it looks okay. Um, it's kind of got like this blue color thing scheme going on to it. Uh, it's all right. Will turn red if you press the sport mode button here, but whatever. I like the uh, the steering wheel controls. Um, you know, it's very easy to kind of go through the uh, the center gauge clutcher screen here. You can actually see all of the. That's where you control all of the uh, the the safety features like the uh, lane keep assist, blind spot monitoring, all that stuff. You can turn on and off there. There's no heads up display or anything like that. Uh, you can change your uh, volume controls, uh, the track selection, all that is in the steering wheel as well. So there's that. Sunroof in this particular model, like I mentioned. And uh, you have two little cup holders here, a decent amount of space in the uh, the center armrest thing here, but not a whole lot. Decent amount of space in the glove box as well. So reasonably practical car. The back seats, I definitely do fit back there. Not an issue. I'm five foot 11. I can definitely sit behind myself. That's not an issue. I feel like you can be six foot, six foot one and still be able to sit up at the front and be able to sit behind yourself. So definitely reasonably practical for a compact size car. Again, this car is about 182 inches long as a whole. I will say the, uh, the headroom is kind of where you're, you'll be lacking a little bit, I feel like. And it, it can be a little bit more difficult getting into the rear seats. If you're a taller person, you might be able to, you know, hit your uh, head up against the window sill there. So there it is. That's something to watch out for. But same quality seats back there. Not too, too bad. Um, you could technically put three adults back there because there's not like that transmission tunnel thing in the middle. So not too bad. Pretty accommodating as a whole. No HVAC in the rear. And the trunk space is tremendous huge amount of space i would almost argue that there's probably more practical usable space in the sedan than there is in the hatchback which is crazy you can just fit a whole lot of stuff back there it's very deep it's almost like the same size as like a mid-sized car's trunk it's very impressive so that's not an issue you have a spare in the rear as well in the in the trunk actually so there's that and um that's really it though that's pretty much my review on the 2020 corolla sedan it's definitely one to put on the short list um Really, most every compact car is good. However, Toyota just, you know, they have like that ease of driving that I really appreciate. It's just the right size. The comfort is tremendous. And it's just a non-fatiguing experience. And it's just stupid reliable, of course. Great resale value. That's some of the things, some of the perks of owning a Toyota. So if you're in the new car segment, it's definitely one to not ignore for sure. And I'm really happy that they fixed the 
uh, high speed stability of this vehicle. I don't know if it's something to fix or if there's something wrong with the uh, the hatchback I had, but uh, I'm just really impressed with the uh, Corolla as a whole. And it's just one that I really enjoyed my time with. So let me know your thoughts. And if you're an owner, I would love to hear from you as well. Definitely a great choice. And uh, let me know. Thank you again for watching. Take care and goodbye. Mm -hmm.